<clears throat> All right, welcome back to another episode of Nick's Morning Coffee. Um, you know, today, Joy, this is, I think, episode number 24. 24? Yeah, so next time we come on, um, that'll be, yeah, that'll be our 25th episode. So if we probably, if we didn't take that break last year, mm. after what, I think after like 12 shows. Yeah, we only did like, yeah, 11 or 12. And we did them like every, almost every day. So, um, all right, so we got, we got to get to it today because, you know, this is going to be, by the time we do this show, and I'm going to run through the dates, this is going to be the last time we talk to them before the draft. Mm. And before the trades, mm -hmm. <laughs> trades is coming up. So we're gonna um, we're gonna run down uh, first some key dates um, that we all gotta have, and this stuff is just coming out. And then too, it make me kind of concerned now for what the Knicks gonna do, and mm -hmm. I'll tell you why later on the show. Okay, for trades, teams can start doing business November sixteenth. And that's like what Monday. I know, right? That's like Monday. So these are trades. Um, the draft is November 18th. But um, don't trade without me. <laughs> <laughs> Two days away, right? Then free agency, teams can start the process on the 20th mm -hmm. of talking, you know, I guess talking to players and, and teams. And then on the 22nd, they can sign their free agents. Mm -hmm. So it's like all coming like, like, like downhill real quick. Then training camp starts December the 1st. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm happy about that. And then so the that's start is stone. That's in stone. Yeah, as of right now, yeah. Um, because you know, I don't want to jump, but you know, the networks, the players like LeBron, a lot of them lobby to keep moving it back or sitting out. But you know, the networks, they want their money. They want to mm -hmm. recoup some of their money. Mm -hmm. So all that bread they laid out when there was no games, mm -hmm. they're like, no, we gotta get, you know, games on the air. Mm -hmm. Okay, so December uh first is training camp, December twenty second. Is the start of the season for whoever you know how the schedule goes. Mm -hmm. So, um, the salary cap pretty much stay the same mm -hmm. at around one hundred nine million, and then um, I think I seen too with the Knicks they're gonna have about forty plus million. Mm -hmm. So that's not that's not bad. But uh, my concern for all of this, and we're gonna go through some of the motions today. And for me today, <laughs> it really just motions because with all this stuff being so bunched together. Was never happened before, mm. you know. Trades, draft, free agency. That's going to uh, trades are going to throw off people's draft, mm. you know, position because they may get, they may get something they wasn't expecting to get, mm. and then you draft, and, and then a few days later, the draft is going to affect, mm -hmm. you know, the free agency. So I, I tell you the truth now, I'm almost like, you know, we all do this, and 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 you know, we feel we want to be right, mm. or you you know, and it's all a guessing game. But then you try to. You come up with some ideas and then you start seeing it on TV and you start seeing it at a team's mouth. You start feeling, hey, I'm in the ballpark. Mm -hmm. But now I don't know because anything could happen now. All right, so we're going to start just real quick. We're going to just start with the Knicks draft picks. Now, um, on Tuesday, I was watching something on MSG where they had like a Knicks mock draft. Now, look at this. They had... I forgot what show it was. I should have wrote it down. Um, Halliburton had us taking Halliburton at eight. Mm -hmm. And then our 27th pick, they had us taking Isaiah Stewart, big mm -hmm. man from Washington Huskies. I'll, you know, he, he, like he could run the floor a lot, but I, I, didn't, I don't know what too much about him. But that's just strange how uh, Halliburton's name just keep popping up. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if that was his name there because – when they was doing the mock draft, maybe, you know, you start finding out things because mm. people want to move down. People want to, uh, like, like Golden State, they may, they may or may not have money to pay a top pick. Mm. So, you know, guys might want to get out of the first round. But in my heart of hearts, I'm just going to cut right to that part. In my heart of hearts, I see us taking Isaac Okora um, only because his name pops up. His name popped up the most. So, I, I, I believe, unless something strange, really strange happen, I believe he is going to be our uh, first, our, our eighth pick in the draft. Mm -hmm. You know, and then as far as our 
27th and 38th now with everything being so bunched up i don't i don't know no more mm -hmm. like i know i want a big man and i know i want shooters you know so i don't i really don't have a clue anymore how about you who's your heart of hearts pick and who you think they're going to pick i mean the only person i've been looking at the most was the uh, dude kyra lewis and uh, anthony edwards people like that but I think they they up for grabs for anybody. So, mm. yes, yeah, this is getting like this is getting crazy. Okay, so moving on, we're gonna we're gonna run through the five point guards and just see where things lie. The five veteran guards mm. that has popped up on the Knicks radar through this process. So Chris Paul, we know he don't want to go to LA anymore. Mm. Remember his two choices. Uh, preferably were the Knicks in L.A., mm -hmm. according to sources. So now they say he don't want to go to L.A. Mm -hmm. So that mean he want to go to the Knicks, or is he trying to go someplace else? Uh, I think, I really think he he really is trying to go somewhere where Melo can follow him. I think he's really trying to put that together. I think, and I also think, too, these players are trying to go to where they can get their money. I don't think they're worried about right now. Well, he's getting his money because unless he opts out, he's not going to opt out of his contract. Yeah, but I'm thinking he's trying to go somewhere where maybe Melo don't got to get a veteran's minimum or... Like, I think that's what they're thinking. Oh, you mean take less for Melo? Yeah, I think that's what they're thinking oh, right okay. now. okay. Because there was somebody put up last week on one of the on one of the shows um, saying that the Knicks are open to bringing in Melo. Now, this is say With or without Chris Paul. Mm -hmm. So but you know, Melo, I don't think is willing to come without a Chris Paul. So that's why I, I really think like Knicks. I think has the most appealing to players that want their money mm -hmm. and want to be on their own. Now I think when if we if we get a Chris Paul, we definitely get a Melo, and I think definitely somebody else is following. I think I think they're gonna try to make a big three of people that that don't have a. a well, Melo they don't have a ring, basically. Oh, I was gonna say because Melo don't he don't qualify no more. As much as I love, you know, I love Melo mm. as a big three. Okay, well, I'm gonna jump down to I'm gonna skip one. So you said speaking of people want to get their money, uh, Fred Van Fleet. Mm. He said he already won a championship. He want to get paid, mm. so he's willing. I guess he's willing to go. Now that could be a bluff to tell Toronto, mm. I will leave you because they can. They can match any offer somebody give them. Mm. So he's saying, I already won. Now show your appreciation. Mm. And when you put that kind of stuff out there, yeah, you're trying to bluff your own team, mm. but you also letting other teams know, listen, you want to open up that bank? You know, let mm. me know. I'm, I'm, I'll come. So what, what's that looking like to you for the for the Knicks? The, the, the ball is literally in their court. I think the Knicks is pretty much the only team that everything is looking up for them. It, I don't even think they got it as hard as Philly, Philly had it and Golden State had it. And I'm just going to throw the, the Bobcats, remember, when, like, when they had it. Knicks look pretty good right now because I think anybody will go there now. Yeah, because our the regime NBA, has changed. People might want to come and in And the NBA is changing. So now you're talking about people not getting their money uh, for the next couple of years. Only certain teams got that. Uh -huh. Knicks is the only big market team that has money. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, yeah, that's the possibility, but with the regime changing, I think people are going to start wanting to come here, but nobody wants that savior title for some reason. All right, so Russell Westbrook wants out of Houston. And then, and then I was looking at something else yesterday where him and Harden, I guess, Russell had a, they had a team meeting mm -hmm. at some point, I guess, during the bubble. And he was pointing out, even himself, what everybody need to do after like a two-game losing streak or something like that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of players didn't like it, and mm -hmm. particularly Harden when he didn't like the criticism he was getting. Mm -hmm. So now they're supposedly at odds. And then I seen something else that say with Dal Mori gone, who was mm -hmm. Harden's, you know, mm -hmm. adversary, chief adversary, um, maybe they planning this together mm -hmm. to both get out of Houston. Because all of a sudden now, you're not friends anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I Yeah, I don't think that was the case. Uh, 
They they both literally need the ball in their hand. We talk about that all the time. The yeah. superstar, certain superstars need the ball in their hand. So Westbrook does whatever he wants. Somebody had to take a back back seat to that. If it was up to me, even though that's Harden's team, I'd have just allowed Harden to take a back seat. Westbrook got to get more assists, and Harden can take up more shots. Yeah, see, Harden, Harden. So they could have worked together. It could have worked, but I really think it's something with Houston that they just not like it. Because they did that small ball thing. Are they still trying to do that or something? Like, Well, Dan Tony's gone. Mari's gone, so you don't tell him so what. I think it was something else. Like They must be getting the blame or something, so. And Harden doesn't want to be there by himself. Westbrook, he's another one. Yeah, but Harden is Harden is part of the blame, though. I mean, Harden, okay, you could say he's probably one of the best scorers in the game. All right, but if he don't got the ball, mm -hmm. dribbling around for his shot, mm -hmm. he takes himself out of the play. So, like, you're not even trying to help. You're not even cutting. You did the same thing with Chris Paul. Mm -hmm. You just, I'm going to shoot, and when I'm not shooting, I'm just going to stand over here and pout. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, Come on, look, you West, got too Westbrook, much talent for that. Westbrook is the one and the two, right? Harden's more like a two and three. Yeah. So Westbrook, as much friends as they are, if I'm the point guard, you shouldn't bring the ball up. Harden brings the ball up. Because Dan Tony made him the point guard. Exactly. So well, now that said, Westbrook's like, well, I'm here now. You don't have to do that. He's probably yeah. looking at him like he's crazy. Yeah, they both selfish, but in this case... Um, I think Harden is the culprit in this case because mm. he and he, he gets your triple doubles, but they're not real triple doubles mm. to me. Um, uh, Victor Oladipo. Now, supposedly, he told several players from like three teams, the Knicks included, to the players during the games and after the games, can I come and play with you? So. He must obviously want out of Indiana, mm. and he must want his own team. So if things should break down, what's your take on? Victor Oladipo? Yeah. He's another one. I don't think he's the only answer. I, I would take him if that's all we had. Not saying that he's not like a, he's a bad player or anything. I like Victor Oladipo, but if that's all that's left, you could probably make smarter moves than that. Mm -hmm. All right. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. it's he's not he's not nobody right now is be all end all, but he's definitely not for all that. Then you might as well get Chris Paul. Yeah, I feel like he can make a team better. Oli Depot. Well, somebody, somebody, somebody commented. I think it was last week after uh, asking, "Was I star chasing?" And no, not star chasing. Mm -hmm. um, we just we just you know presenting mm -hmm. what's out there. And once something is out there, you know me, I've been Nick fan so long, I'm going to try to figure out a way to make it work. Because, mm. I, you know, I've had teams to go up with average players to go up and play against regular teams just mm. in intramural leagues. Mm. And I've taken some non-athletic looking guys mm. to championships over some, you know, guys who mm. look like you can't be on the, shouldn't even be on the same court with them. Mm. So, yeah, if we hear something's out there, we're going to talk about it. But, you know... We got to be realistic, too. If they're really not rebuilding the right way, mm. who really wants to sit around a year or two and wait while Kyrie, right, and KD make fools out of our guards? Mm. I would like to see, if it's not really a true point guard in the draft that we mm. get that's exciting, then, yeah, I would like to see a guard that at least when Kyrie lines up, mm. he know he got his work cut out for him. Mm. Because that could be a whole year of misery just from them, you know, acting a fool over there, you know, in Brooklyn. So, yeah, like, but no, star chasing never. Are but we looking at, you know, yeah, like at some point, are we looking at empty stats? Like you said, we're hard and like he just has the ball in his hand. Yeah. So are we are we looking at that? Or are we going to really look at how do they impact a team? Yeah. Victor Oladipo, yeah, he brought excitement to Indiana, but there was no real big impact there. Yeah. You want you want to play that's really going to impact. Well, after his injury, because, you know, after his injury, he just hasn't been the same yet. But most injuries, and I'm not even making a case for Victor Lodipo, but mm -hmm. then most injuries, sometimes it take a year, a year, playing and another mm -hmm. year to come back fully. And then for some reason, too, the last one, Mike Conley, his name, I, I was told, is still on the tongue of some mm -hmm. of the Knicks brass. So, to me, that's that's almost like stuck. Now, I don't know what's going to happen in this because mm -hmm. this is going to be a two-week frenzy. 
going on in the NBA. Mm -hmm. And the GMs that are like the shrewdest mm -hmm. maneuvering, they're the ones that's going to take advantage of people. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that's going to happen. But those are just five veteran guards that's out there mm -hmm. that have been talked about. Mm -hmm. So we just wanted to throw that out because we don't, we're not going to see them again until after this process. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll see them before free agency, but not before the draft and, and trades. Um, okay, so I was thinking about what do the Knicks need to be successful while they still developing Mitch and RJ. So I came up with stretch forward, stretch forwards that won't hinder their, you know, their, their progress. Mm -hmm. So of course, you know, I like, uh, Christian Woods, who is obtainable. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of teams now, he, he's, his salary demands is still reasonable for us. Mm -hmm. And he should get more, deserve more. Um, Davis Bertans, you know, you give me him, mm -hmm. you don't really get no problems out of me. Um, I could live with Gallinari, you know, because mm -hmm. he's still serviceable. And you're only talking about a year or two of these players anyway, unless you get one of those other younger ones. And then, and then getting Mook, getting, you know, Marcus Morris back. Mm -hmm. So you get a stretch, you get stretch fours that they got heart to still play the game. They're not just standing in the corner stretch fours. Mm -hmm. You know, they get in there and they mix it up. Mm -hmm. So, and then I was thinking about three point specialists and these people are attainable. Mm -hmm. You know, Joe Harris. Joe Harris is, is out there. People now trying to see where he can pair up mm -hmm. because to me, he's a scoring assassin. I don't really like him with the nets because his mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, talking like he done so much. Um, and then Bogdanovich, you know, guys that could put the ball in the hole from the three point mm -hmm. line, even though, even though, uh, uh, Dinwiddie could do more. And it's funny because I was just about to ask you too. I was going to wait till later, but I kind of want Dinwiddie still. He's a big well, guard. And technically, he's a veteran. And it seems like Nets might want to get rid of him. No, I think they do, which, which to me, him and Levert, but I think they, the Nets are making a mistake, but that's their problem. Yeah. Because you got three scores mm. at the two guard position, even though Dinwiddie could play twice. But I put Dinwiddie in my all around score. I ain't going to waste my time with the Nets right now. I put <laughs> Dinwiddie in my all around score. Now, listen to this name. I've been liking this guy. For, I'm going to throw a name out at you. Who I've been liking for a long time. Mm. Um, a do everything player who won't, who can be serviceable. Mm -hmm. really serviceable to us mm -hmm. and won't hurt RJ and Mitch's development. Mm -hmm. And that's Jabari Parker. Oh yeah. Now he's out there in Sacramento. He's like, he become a journeyman for some mm -hmm. reason, but you give me Jabari Parker. He's mm -hmm. like a mini mellow yet less devious. I guess you could say. Yeah. You know? I, yeah. I don't, I don't see that wrong with Jabari Parker. I, yeah. I don't know why, I don't know why his, his, I know he got hurt a lot. And his like his stock fell. Like I look at when he was there with Milwaukee, mm -hmm. and him and Giannis to me should have worked. Mm -hmm. You know, but I guess Giannis dominates the ball. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, I was the Knicks. Like you know, go out, if you get a, go out and get a small forward who can also play some four because mm -hmm. he can shoot. And he'll be with them young boys. Yeah, yeah, and mm -hmm. he, he won't hog the ball. Mm -hmm. But yet anywhere on the court, he can score. Mm -hmm. You know, so these were just some like realistic players. <clears throat> the Knicks can add to RJ and Mitch. And at the same time, you're not forcing it on mm -hmm. RJ and Mitch, but guys that can still go out and get it done, but you can try to run it through RJ. Man, listen, you know, I'm a, I'm a 2K guy. So, <laughs> I don't even play no so, 2K. Yeah. So, so Jabari Parker is always first on my list. So <laughs> I take him every time we do fantasy drafts and stuff like that. So yeah, he get it. I think he getting about 20 mil or something like that, but mm -hmm. for the things that he can do for you, rebounding, running the floor, mm -hmm. pushing the ball, Scoring inside, outside. I mean, you know, I, I I take that. I take that in a heartbeat. And I wish they would go and look at that. Mm -hmm. So I think we can pair two of those type of players with some of the players that we got. You know, something might something might can give. Um, and then again, I was, I was saying that we're not going to see you you guys really until after. So I'm, I really don't want to speculate too much mm -hmm. on that now because I'm like I'm anxious. And, and I'm nervous. And at the same mm -hmm. time, it's like, it's exciting because mm -hmm. a whole lot is going to happen that I think we come back next Friday mm -hmm. 
the same the same night of what is that the same night of something when we do our show mm -hmm. so we're gonna still have to do okay the same night of the of the free agency mm -hmm. so we're gonna have to uh probably do two we gotta probably squeeze out two because we're not gonna be able to it mm -hmm. won't be fair to the to the people that do you know follow us mm -hmm. To have to wait all the way till the following Friday. After mm -hmm. you know, after we do next Friday, mm -hmm. we got to try to come back that weekend. Oh yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, and get something in because you know. Um, Let's talk about it in the comments. You know what I mean? The comments been fun lately. Yeah. I'm looking at all the lineups. Yeah. And let's see what you guys think, and uh, let's keep me updated. You know, I'm I, I'm always at work, so let me know what's going on while I'm at work. <laughs> yeah. So check out <laughs> this lineup my, from one of the course. comments last week. Uh, Brian Williford. Mm -hmm. Now this is interesting. CP3. RJ, mm -hmm. Mello, Christian Wood, mm -hmm. and Mitch, right? Mm -hmm. Then off the bench, he had a defensive lineup bench mm -hmm. of Frank, Dot, mm -hmm. Patrick Williams at mm -hmm. Florida State, mm -hmm. you know, small forward, power forward that can get up and down the court and can shoot. Mm -hmm. Baines, remember Baines, mm -hmm. and Randall for points. Mm -hmm. That's not bad. I mean, I think we... I feel like, I, and I feel like that's I mean, cool. yeah. I would like to see somewhere in there. We still need a marksman mm. in there somewhere that get time. But yeah, that that's that's like a doable um trade. Um, and then you get uh, a man. Okay, so Andy K. You know, he he's a, he's a follower of ours. And thanks for your comment. You know, we appreciate that. That you might be a Nick's Morning Coffee junkie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. Um, but you said if we get Lamelo Ball and big man Jalen Smith, you know that would you know, add to our troubles. And mm. then uh, nobody's going to argue with you um, on that. And then Juan Franklin, you know, another, you know, uh, watcher, a weekly mm. watcher of ours, um, he said he thinks he's our number one fan. Mm. So, I mean, in this short time, you know, it's nice to have somebody say that. And then, yeah, you said we, we break things down. We we try to break things down, you know, where we mm. can. You know, we... We even we actually like slowing it down because we both such Nick fans. Um, yeah, my Knicks emotion be high. I know y'all got caught a couple glimpses of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they they really haven't seen how we really <laughs> how we really do it when we just like sitting there talking, and then um, and Khalid, it really is early, y'all. Like, it, yeah, it really do be early. In the <laughs> and you know, Khalid Pasha, you know, thank you for your back and forth comments mm. um, last week. You know, we appreciate it. And then, you know, of course, Legion of Knicks podcast. Oh, of course. Cool. Um, you know, time. his show, he has like a, almost like a daily show. Mm -hmm. And uh, he always brings some good Knicks content. And then he's also, he's a fellow Jets fan too. So, always going live. Um, we appreciate last week. We've asked y'all to comment, subscribe. And mm -hmm. a, a lot of y'all have done that, you know, but we, we'd thank like you, to see you. more, you know. So, thank you for that. You, Joey? Oh, no. Nah, just uh, keep commenting and keep watching. We appreciate the love. Um, like I said, real Nick fans. I say that every episode. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, we yeah. have regular Nick fan conversation, and everything is like actually spot on. Like we can, it can go either way. It's not like no, oh yeah, we're gonna get Michael Jordan and turn around and get Durant on the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like real comments. Nah, we trying to we trying to talk the way we do if we was at the water cooler or in the barbershop or just hanging out with our boys. So anyway, um, there's gonna be a big week coming up. We're gonna have a, probably a lot to talk about next week. And we see y'all then and stay safe. Peace. Peace.